Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Five for the Community Manager. Actually, Ben, you have a much longer title now that um, now that we have a new Community Manager, right? Yeah, I've actually had a long title for a while. It just seemed pretentious, so I, I just stick with Community Manager for my day-to-day -day business. Now, now we have to call you Senior Community Manager, right? Yeah, you can call me Senior Community Manager. If so, matters, so I have to change the name of the title, the title of this from... Five for the CM to five for the SCM, so then I could start talking to uh, the other group. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get on. I have quite a few questions for you since we had a few weeks off, and I think we're going to hold it to like six or seven max. The first one is going to come from one of the uh, Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous thread and Enabler med members, Renegade Shank. He wants to know, are you going to be releasing a brick and mortar edition of star citizen like a box that we could buy somewhere um the answer is probably um we sold box copies of the game early in the campaign and of course one of our priorities is fulfilling those promises um for actually getting you know copies of the game into gamestop uh it requires more than just us you know we have to partner with someone who could publish them and put them into supply chain right. uh, we definitely want to do it we just don't have a we don't have that locked down yet. Uh, and of course, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get shelf space for a PC game. Right. Anyway. But uh, I, I, would, I would expect to see that down okay. around. And if you did that because you know you have cost of distribution and you have to get with a publisher at that point, well, not like a publisher that's going to give you money, but someone to publish the actual yeah. materials. Do you think Proper that... Proper definition of publisher. Yeah. Do you think that the box copy would be more expensive at that point? Certainly. I, I would say so. I mean, I think... You won't find a, a PC, a boxed game for under you know fifty nine ninety five, whatever their right. standard is. Uh, but frankly, anybody buying Star Citizen for forty dollars right now is getting a hell of a deal. You, you're getting two double, uh, two triple A games, uh, all sorts of extras, um, and so on. <laughs> okay. Now the release of uh, version one point of Arena Commander was kind of bumpy in the beginning. Was it pushed out? like Chris said, just so we had something to do? Like, did you guys know it was buggy before it went out, or is that something that hit after? A um, little of both. We, uh, we had a build that we knew was rather buggy that had some significant bugs, and we were prepared to say, okay, this build, we're going to put out for holidays, we're going to call it like .999, um, you guys are going to have something to enjoy while we're away, and we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, the build that actually came out was one that was a little bit more questionable, but also fixed the blockers that we had discovered in the previous game. So it's a, it's a case of it's less buggy than we expected, but it still had some issues that we discovered later. So uh, uh, it, it was uh, differently buggy. Okay. The uh, Arena Commander also introduced the Mustangs to us, and the Mustang was to be released as a starter ship. Now, I can say the Mustang Alpha is definitely a starter ship, but the cost of the other one seems to be more in line with like the Origin um, 300 series, which used to be a midline ship. Do you now consider the Origin uh, 300 a starter ship, or the pricing, um, just so you could cross two lines with one product i wouldn't call it a starter ship so much it, it's definitely leaning in that direction um again going back to this box copy question i could see sometime in the future where hey if we're going to say you start citizen for 60 dollars in a box maybe it will come with an origin 300 and maybe that would be a starter ship um but I, I wouldn't i don't think it's related to the mustang i think we basically we had a need for a very basic mustang because we want we want three starter ships actually I, I see this workflow on the website where you literally pick which of the three star you know Right now, we throw like 50 ships at you. We're like, which do you want? Uh, right. I think the better experience for new players is going to be, hey, here's three cool-looking starter ships. Which do you want to start with? Um, so that, that'll that be Mustang Alpha, uh, Base Aurora, and uh, the new one. Uh, yeah. Is it the Reliant, the MISC Reliant? Uh, is that it? I, That's the I one that we, the new one. That's the one that we picked. Everybody wanted the two-seater from right, the people right. that make us the freelancer. So. <laughs> Yeah, and Chris wanted the little uh, motorcycle one you know, yeah. that they talked about. And who knows, Chris might get what he wants. He is the boss. Yeah, I think he'll see some of that in the future. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they have, we also wanted 
to fill in some other roles with the Mustang, especially the racer, because we want a racer available in the store at all times. Um, hopefully, we're going to be bringing back the M50 primarily also. Um, but, okay. uh, yeah, and then same with the military one. We wanted something that would be up there with the, not quite the Hornet, but a similar military experience. Just uh, I like it. It's kind of it kind of lets you see how far you can go with a base chassis uh, in the final game, right? And it kind of shows you the importance of components because you know the same base ship is becoming something much more valuable with these upgrades added to it. That is my favorite ship right now. Now I've been waiting for the Mustang forever because the the word Mustang when it comes to military aircraft and cars is just something I love. But they and really I, nailed it. Yeah, I, I remember going into that. Uh, I mean, I, I, I remember pitching Mustang and saying, "Okay, this may be hard to hard to sell because it's one of those story names that it's very hard to use in your sci-fi setting. It's it's like trying to call a ship Enterprise anywhere other than Star Trek." Uh, and there's a couple World War II aircraft. I I would have a hard time imagining like a Spitfire in a space combat game. So I, I'm really happy with how we pulled off Mustang, just honoring that lineage. I hope you come out with Hurricane or Typhoon at some point. That would be cool. I've heard Hurricane thrown around. Yeah, that's good. Avengers, another question here, because the Avengers has been one of those ships that came out early on. It wasn't in the original hangar module, but it was the first additional ship that we saw. And yep. it's had a major update and a couple of tweaks in between. We're about ready to get our, well, not about ready. I know it's sometime in the near future you guys are going to release the variants to the Avenger. Early on in the lore, when you read the, when you read the lore that I think maybe you wrote or somebody else wrote about Aegis Dynamics, they talk about that being a ship that's been around for over a hundred years and actually is a starter ship in the military. It's like the training ship. But then I heard that you guys took that away, that there won't be a trainer variant. Is that still the case? or? Well, it still exists in the law of the universe that they're used as trainers. Um, in an earlier version of Squadron 42's uh, outline, we were going to start you off in the Avenger. That's one of the reasons we created so quickly. Those mission designs have changed. It's going to be the Gladius instead. Okay. But it's still it's still in the Star Citizen universe. It's still the trainer ship that the UE uses to train new pilots. Uh, Squadron 42 is just going to jump you directly into the action without, without doing one of those kind of standard, here's how you fly. Uh, well, some people are asking, are you going to return a twin-seater, a two-seater Avenger to the list at some point? It's, uh, it's still floating around. Okay. So that, that would mean it's probably not in the upcoming releases of the variants. It's, it's not one of the variants you're going to see soon, but uh, they, they'll be interesting in uh, okay. other ways. That's good. I've seen the interior and I've you know just meshed around in my head. And after looking at how much you could put into the Mustang air, space frame, I keep trying to call it an airframe, space frame, with the beta having the, the bed, the couch, and the bathroom, I can see that space behind the cockpit becoming something different in one of those variants at some point, I hope. Yeah, in fact, um, if you look through some of the stuff we've leaked recently you may actually see one of the objects that goes in the back of the avenger oh, we'll have to go find that themselves is it on sandy's facebook or something maybe on... yeah sandy's facebook but just for those of you that don't know sandy's facebook is the perfect place to get sneak peeks at lots of different things that are coming especially stuff like the starfare which oh my god that thing this looks amazing i want to talk a little bit about the um voyager direct now, originally, I get the idea that Voyager Direct was put out there as a way to give us a different kind of opportunity to help pledge early on for different things like hangar flare items and weapons that weren't going to be u useful to you for quite some time. Do you think that the weapon prices that were put out there at that point Ju are justified at this point when some of the weapons cost as much as a starter ship or even more than a starter ship? Uh, actually, you know, I can talk about the weapons a little bit. It's, it's something of an ongoing debate between uh, design and marketing right now. Yeah. Um, because they will come to us and say, okay, we've come up with this weapon and we've run the numbers and it's worth $35. Like, no, no one's going to buy a weapon for that much. Because that's uh, what's going on now to get two of the CF. 227 so it's 36 dollars yeah um and it's it's entirely a game balance thing we, we'd rather 
go with what we are currently calculating to be worth in the game universe uh, compared to a base ship rather than Good. reducing it to sell more of them, basically. But, uh, but these are things that are going to be fluctuating in cost when the game goes live. Oh, yeah. Because it's going to be supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. And how many could you build? Who's delivering the materials to those factories? So if you're one of the people delivering a lot to the factories that are making it, you might be able to get a discount on them in-game at that point, right? Yeah, my, my hope is that it get, the current prices get across the idea of how, how valuable components are. It's, it's not just pick a ship and fly that forever. You're, you're, they're going to be extremely customizable. And uh, as, as with, like, say, the original Privateer, the, uh, the bulk of the value of your ship will be how you outfit it. Right. Uh, how the game plays and, you know, theoretical monetary value. I'll also say that... Uh, I personally, I would say don't buy anything from the Voyager Direct Store right now. We're we're working on the uh, in-game credits and reading. Good, good, good. Don't go any further with that because that's one of the questions, all right? Okay. That's awesome. We know that you were going to do that. So that's one of the things I brought up in one of my State of the Games. I bring up controversial topics in my State of the Game, and then I come and I ask you those questions, okay? Ah. So my thing was pointing out the cost of the weapons and saying, hey, this is still things that we pledge for, not things that are actually that value in game. But you hit on something that makes sense. When I played Freelancer, it was a lot of money to equip the ship. And if you want to see a, a good current way to understand the cost of weapons and systems, go play Elite Dangerous. The cost of outfitting your ship could triple or quadruple the cost of the frame. And Chris said that in his uh, 10 for the chairman at one point. Do you remember that when he was asked that question? Yeah, yeah. yeah Chris was asked a question, and the question essentially went like, uh, um, are there going to be levels, and how are we going to gain, I think it was, how are we going to gain levels, or how are we going to advance our skill in the game? And he said it was skill-based, but, and you could take it from there. It's going to be how you equip your ship, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, Equipping a ship is not just going to be a matter of, oh, the person with the most money has the best ship. Um, there's a questing aspect to it. You know, hey, if we want to get this really rare good gun, and by good I mean, you know, there's no, this is the best gun. This, this is the best gun for this job. This is the best gun for how I fly. You know, maybe you have to fly up into the unknown and discover one. You have to make a trade pack with the Cheyenne or something. Uh, just more than just, oh, go to the store, buy the best one. Uh, but there's also a formula to equipping your ship, is there not? That oh, yeah. putting higher weapons in there may give you less power to draw into other systems. Absolutely. It's a trade-off everywhere. Um, you can't just say, okay, here, I mean, this was something you could do in private here. I remember doing this, writing down all the like middle school notebook, figuring out, oh, okay, this is the level five engine. That's the best one. This is the, this gun does the most damage. It's the best one. Uh, no, it's, it's massively... You know, there's all sorts of values. It's stealth, for instance. Um, the gun that causes the most damage may also give away your position very readily. Uh, it may drain your engine very quickly. It may uh, explode. Uh, it may be take much more. It may take damage much more quickly. Uh, so it's it's all sorts of. It's it's designed to go into how you play. You know, if if I want to fly a tank of a ship with a big cruising gun, then that's one way to build it. But maybe I want to fly a really light stealth ship that can take out those tank ships very quickly. Uh, all, all sorts of options. Okay. And I see it kind of like for people that play traditional MMOs, it would be like equipping yourself for different specs. And yeah. you hit it, whether it be tanking or long range. In this situation, if you want to produce a lot of damage, you might not have enough power to put a big shield in there or big cooling. Shield is armor are massively important. Cooling... Um, there, there must be twenty CPU. Or variables. Yeah, yeah. CPU, uh, computer stuff is going to be very important. Yeah, and then of course there's also that that final layer of tuning for individual components. Uh, All you know, right, overclocking your god, uh, overclocking any system. So, can you share with us any of the ideas of earning arena commander credits that you're coming up with and may implement in a near um, near release or new yeah, release? We're, <laughs> we're working on kicking off that system. Um, I think. It'll probably be 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 somewhere around there. Um, basically, just the idea is that by playing Arena Commander with other people, you'll generate AC bucks, and then you can take the AC bucks, and well, they're not going to be called that, but you can take the uh, as of yet untitled Arena Commander money, and you can get uh, ship components. Um, you can 
and this is all inside of Arena Commander, rather than Star Citizen in total. So you know, you're you're buying right Arena we, Commander DLC. So. Right, and we and we want to say that the reason why Arena Commander has a one is it's not Star Citizen; it's a yeah. game within the game universe. Yeah. All right, I must apologize. It was at this point that for some reason my recording got split and it was because of a hard drive failure that I had. So what went on is I asked Ben about the things that we had brought up about creating a way to make the game a little bit more enjoyable as we're testing it. And that was what are the modes? What kind of events or missions can we expect each week? His answer essentially was, we were going to give you credits for playing with friends. And he didn't elaborate too deeply upon that. I then asked him, or gave him suggestions that we had come up with inside of the comments section of that state of the game, I think it was either 15 or 16. And he took to them fairly well. So now, I'm just going to play the last couple of minutes of this episode, and I'll see you all next week. Um... Last question has to still do with weapons, but this has to do with when the game goes live, so it's probably something that will change a million times between now and then. So we'll be fighting against each other, but a lot of times we'll be fighting against a Vanduul. We'll be shooting apart their ship. We'll be able to collect the weapons that are on their ships, and if we do so, will we need to do something different to equip a Vanduul technology weapon to our ship? than we would to equip something that's made in Terran or Xi'an space. Yeah, you would need... Um, we, we kind of invented this puck system where different weapons will plug into the same hardpoint. You would probably need something specialized for an alien weapon. But uh, that, that'll all be systemic. Uh, all right. That's it, Ben. I collected a bunch, and I'm going to have to ask you more next week. I like to keep right. these short. Thank you so much for joining me. And do you have a Star Citizen New Year's resolution at all that you want to share with everybody? Uh, just make the best damn space sim ever. Hey, that sounds like last year. <laughs> thanks. We're working on it. Yeah, thanks, Ben. I will talk to you again next week. All right, talk to you soon.